Hey guys, time for my NXT review from August 14th, 2013. Fun episode. Just going to be honest. This is a fun episode to watch. So after the intro, we go right to Paul Heyman. Wow, Paul Heyman coming on. And he says that he's at NXT because he is looking for the next Paul Heyman guy. And he talks about how successful he has been with men that have been under his tutelage, like, and I'm going to do my Paul Heyman impression here, Brock Lesnar! Uh, and then his most recent success, the Intercontinental Champion, Curtis Axel! And Curtis Axel comes down to the ring. So Heyman says that, Axel's not here to defend the Intercontinental title tonight, and that he's just here to, you know, be with Heyman to scout around. Well, all of a sudden, here comes Biggie Langston. He's still popular at NXT. It's not even funny. If you've never watched NXT, Biggie Langston is one of the most popular wrestlers on NXT. I don't know how those fans are going to cope with him not being on the show anymore once they decide that he's not going to be on the show anymore. So Langston challenges Axel for the Intercontinental title tonight, to which Curtis Axel originally accepts the challenge, but then he decides that he'll defend the title on the Thanksgiving episode of NXT, because, you know, that's a special time of the year. And then he says, you know what? I'll defend the title on the Christmas episode of NXT. You know, that's a special time of year. And then Biggie Langston's is like, shut up. So he's like, if you're not a man, if you're a man, you put the belt on the line against me right now or you're not a man. So Axel decides to put the Intercontinental title on the line. Now, Tony Dawson and William Regal are the announcers for this episode. And... It starts off with Biggie Langston just completely dominating the match, hitting a beautiful belly-to-belly -belly suplex on Axel. Axel, um, in one sequence, hits a leapfrog, which looked good, but Langston manages to come back. And the ending of the match, I really like the ending of the match, um, because Langston takes the, you know, the tassels off, takes the singlet down. So he's starting to set up to end Curtis Axel. Paul Heyman comes in from behind, hits Langston with the Intercontinental title. Ref calls for the bell. Biggie Langston wins as a result of a disqualification. After the match, Axel attacks Biggie Langston. And for a moment, it seems like he got the advantage. So he was going to hit Langston with the Intercontinental belt, but Langston picked him up, hit him with the big ending, gave him the five count, and that's it. So Langston wins on a disqualification, but Axel retains the Intercontinental title. And, you know, I really cannot wait for the day that they do turn Biggie Langston face in WWE because I think he's going to be a good face, especially if he keeps that whole five thing that's just so entertaining to watch. So to the back, Renee Young is with Sami Zayn. And Sami Zayn talks about Antonio Cesaro, how he beat him once and Cesaro beat him once, and how, you know, he's Arab-Canadian. So Zayn says, how about we do one more match? Next week, on the show, two out of three falls. You have to win twice. So Zayn lays down the challenge. Will we get a response? You'll have to see later in the review. So on to our next match, Mason Ryan, who got found by or, uh, fossilized, or, you know, was a fossil, but now he's back, going up against Scott Dawson with his manager, Sylvester LaFort. A uh, very interesting manager, because he's got this accent and talking about money and stuff. So, I don't know. So... If you remember my last review of NXT, I talked about those two Guido guys that came down, or that, that were talking with Dawson and LaFort. Well, they came down during the match. But this is basically Mason Ryan dominating this match. And he beats Dawson eventually 
with a Cobra Clutch Slam to get the three count of the victory. After the match, he beats up the two Guidos, and then he picks up Scott Dawson, lifts him in the air, throws him over the top, and lands on the two guys to no reaction. I'm not kidding. No reaction. You'd think, you know, the people would be going crazy. They'd be on their feet. You know, Mason Ryan, big muscly guy, picks up, you know, Scott Dawson, lifts him in the air, throws him over. No reaction. Not one reaction. So, anyway, got to continue on. Next match, the NXT Women's Championship is on the line. I know I said in the last review I called it the NXT Divas title. I apologize for that. But NXT Women's title on the line. Paige against Summer Rae. May have been their best match that I've seen between the two. Summer Rae takes advantage early on in the match. And they, the, the announcers make a good point in this, in this match how they're so used to each other that they can know what move's going to come, which is a very good point because we see that a lot in this match. So the end of the match, Summer Rae makes a mistake, and Paige takes her over to the ropes. Well, Paige starts hitting her with these elbows that, you know, are not they're knocking her out. They're making her wobbly. And then she sets her up for the page, end, or the page turn, one, two, three, Paige wins, still the Divas cha or the women's champion. To the back, Renee Young is interviewing AJ Lee. And she says that AJ Lee next week on the show is scheduled to defend the Divas title. But she doesn't have an opponent yet. And AJ Lee says that how she likes the fact that she doesn't have an opponent because she likes the unpredictable environment. Because she could face anybody for the title. She could face... You know, the person behind the camera, or the guy, or the lady in the locker room, or even Renee Young. Well, all of a sudden, here comes Bailey from behind, giving her this big old hug, you know. And she says how she's a big fan of hers, and that she's been following AJ Lee from her car, from her locker room. And then she heard AJ Lee talking in the interview, so she came over. And she asks A.J. Lee if she can have the shot at the Divas title, to which A.J. Lee says yes. And Bailey is so happy, she's like, I don't know why people think you're crazy. I just think you're awesome. And then A.J.'s like, what did you say? Well, I think you're awesome. No, before that. I don't know why people think you're crazy. And it's so good. This segment is so good that it ends with... Bailey giving AJ Lee this big hug so AJ Lee can't go after her. It's just so funny. It's good. So we see that next week, uh, Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler is going to be on the next episode of NXT along with the now mentioned WWE Divas Championship match. So we, before we go to the main event, Tony Dawson and William Regal mentioned what happened. During the commercial break, after that match between Paige and Summer Rae, Emma comes back. Emma comes running into the ring and attacks Summer Rae, just basically put, you know, beating her down to the mat, and she leaves. So we finally get to see a little bit of a violent of a violent side of Emma, which I sort of like. Now we go to the main event, six man tag team match. The Shield against Corey Graves, Adrian Neville, and Xavier Woods. Such a good match. This, I'm going to say it right now. This match is one of the reasons why, in my opinion, NXT is ranked in my top three favorite wrestling shows right now. I probably, It's close, because between them and Ring of Honor, you could put either one of them in the top. It'd be 1A, 1B. You could go either way with them. But this is such a good match. Corey Graves and Seth Rollins starts the match. And you get good wrestling, including this one spot where Rollins hits a, an arm drag, but then Graves, in the same motion, hits an arm drag of his own. And then Neville comes in 
hits a couple moves. Woods comes in, hits a couple moves. Rollins, and then, you know, back to Graves, you know, and Graves sends um, Rollins outside, and then the rest of the Shield, you know, help him, and then Neville and Woods, they both hit a simultaneous flip over the top rope, and it was just so good. It was done very well. Come back from the break, and we see that Xavier Woods is in the ring with uh, Roman Reigns, and Xavier Woods is in trouble. So, you know, after a couple minutes there, Dean Ambrose comes in, and Corey Graves comes in. So they have a little bit of a back and forth. Graves tries to lock in his finishing move, uh, Lucky 13, but is stopped by Roman Reigns, and then the Shield have an advantage for a while on Corey Graves, and then Ambrose gets tagged in, and then Graves tags Neville in, and they have a good back and forth, and Neville almost hit his finishing move, that corkscrew four, or you know that corkscrew 450 sunset move. I can't think of it at the moment, but Ambrose brought the knees up. So then Xavier Woods comes in. He and Rollins go at it, and then Ambrose. It's so good because all these guys take each other out eventually. Neville gets caught by Reigns. Reigns is gonna power bomb him, but Neville hits a hurt, you know, flips back over, dumps Reigns over the top to the floor. And Neville goes with him. Ambrose, or I mean, um, Neville. I'm sorry. Graves and Ambrose. They have a moment. They're trying to suplex each other. Ambrose suplexes Graves over the top rope. Graves lands on the floor. Ambrose just holds on for dear life. Well, here comes Woods and Rollins. They're the two legal men now in the ring. And, and Woods is on a roll. You know, he's getting all the momentum. He's about to get the big win. But the end of the match, Woods is on the top or on the second rope. He's doing the punches on the Rollins. Reigns does a blind tag on the Rollins. Rollins hits the, the buckle bomb on the rain, or on the Woods. And then Reigns hits one of the damnedest spears he's ever delivered. One, two, three. Shield win in a very good six-man tag team match that should be seen. Now, you would think, at that point, episode is over. Wrong. Because we go to the back. And um, Renee Young is with Antonio Cesaro. So, Renee asks Cesaro if he's going to accept the challenge from Sami Zayn for a two out of three falls match next week. So, Antonio Cesaro says that well, Zane called me a coward. Well, I'm going to accept the challenge because I am the greatest American. I am the boss of the world. And then here comes Zane out of nowhere. He's attacking Cesaro. People have to break it up. And the last scene you get of that episode is Cesaro standing up, looking angry. And he's going, Zane! And that's the end of the episode. All in all, very good episode, definitely for that six-man tag team match. Have to see the six-man tag. And the next episode, oh my God. AJ Lee and Bailey, Divas Huddle on the line. And then Sami Zayn and Antonio Cesaro, two out of three falls. Enough said. This review is done. Watch this episode. And then watch the one that happened, or that aired this week. Because I'm going to watch it in a couple of moments. And I can't wait to see the big two out of three falls match.